prime time. In this video we are going to install the throttle switch and brake assembly to the car as shown on page 12 of the build manual. You'll only need your allen keys for this build video. The Goblin uses a disc brake attached to the rear axle and to demonstrate, over to Steve. I have in my hand the brake caliper. If I move this lever which will be moved by the cable you should be able to see that those pads come together. And if I Put a disc in there and pull the lever the disc stays stuck. Now we have an understanding as to how our brake caliper works we need to fit it to the car and it sits with the slot with the brake pads sitting over the uh, brake disc. To get an approximation as to its position what we've got to do is actually move the whole axle across the car um, so we, this all fits together. So I can pull that across and now my disc is roughly in the center of, of that gap for the pads. And then we take two uh, bolt or Allen screw with washer. They go into the th holes that are already threaded on the bracket. So now I can actually rotate my axle and it's not actually touching the brake caliper on the, the pads on the caliper but if I squeeze the caliper it grips onto the disc and stops the axle rotating and slows the car down hopefully. What we probably want to do now is go back and actually lock the position of the rear axle so we can't actually slide it anymore. We need to do this on both sides but we'll do it one at a time. And on the axle bearing we have two grub screws so it's one here and if I rotate the axle the second one comes around. With your little allen key that's supplied with those glove screws, you just need to tighten those up. And if you put the short end of the uh, allen key in the hole and use the longer end to tighten that, it wants to be quite tight. That's that one done. And now the axle can't move side to side. And I'll go and do the other side now. Passing cables through metal edged holes is not ideal because over time, the whole the metal will wear away the insulation on the cables and can cause problems. So we solve that problem with two rubber grommets. These are rings of rubber with a groove in and they fit into the two plain holes along this top rail on the right hand side of the car. The next step in our Goblin build is to hook up our throttle switch and for that we need the switch which is a the red push button that will sit in here and the cable is this black cable which is a labeled as G2K and our three characters on there. It's a multi-core cable which means it has multiple cables within the outer black covering. What I'm going to do is take the end of the two spade connectors and pass it up through our steering column and it doesn't matter which uh, cable goes on to which terminal. So, just push them both on as far as you can and then on the switch we've got these little flaps that help hold it in place but also notice here there is a little flange that sticks down and that should be lined up with one of the grooves in the steering column and if you don't do that it's possible that the button actually doesn't spring back up and uh, you'll keep driving when you don't want to. My next cable, which is another multi-core cable, but this time a three-way multi-core, and it's labeled G2L. This is the cable for our front rocker switch. It's important to get the connections on the correct terminals. So I'm just going to take the switch off here for a moment to take a look at it. On the underside, you'll see a little label that says Earth, Load and Supply, which relates to the three connections on here. I'm going to place this switch so that if someone wants to hurriedly switch it off from the driving seat they can hit that bit nearest to them and so away from them will be on with the LED towards the front. So in that case again checking my label I'm going to have earth to the front, load in the middle and supply at the rear. So 
The reason I'm checking that is because I've got to actually fit that back on with its little knurled plastic nut underneath before I can actually attach the spade connectors. So that's now tightened up. And so earth at the front, which is my green and yellow cable. Load in the middle, which is the blue cable. The third one, which is the supply. Again, push some on as far as you can. They are quite stiff. And there we go. So that's that hooked up now. So now I've been to get our brake cable and our brake lever. And so the first job is to get the brake lever mounted on our handlebar on the left hand side. And the way it's going to fit is this way up and then that will get tightened onto there. But for clarity for you, so at the moment, I'm going to rotate it around because I want to show you this side of the brake lever here and this part under here. And the end we're going to connect is this barrel connector here. The other end of the brake cable is a loose or well, plain piece of wire. Be careful when unwrapping this because it's very springy and it could fly off and catch your eye. So take care of undoing that. So the way the cable actually fits to the brake lever is we pull a little bit of this inner out of here. And I don't know if you can actually make it out, but in both this part, this part and here, there is a slot that the cable can go through. And it's a case of lining these up so that they're in position that you can go. The barrel connector then sits into that silver part of the lever and the cable then goes through the slot on the body of the lever, through the locking nut and through the adjuster. And I can then just turn those half a turn and now that can't come out of there. The inner then can sit down actually into the adjuster. Bring our brake lever back down to its usable position and then tighten it up on the steering column. Tighten that up so it clamps to the steering column. There we go. So that's now rigid. So we're going to take a collection of cables towards the back of the car. The first step is to tie our throttle cable to the center section of the steering column. Two cable ties I'm going to use on this. One at the very top of the steering column underneath a couple of triangular flanges and then one just down near our uh, support bush. Then we're going to bring cables across to join the one that comes from the rocker switch. And it's important when doing this to actually allow enough spare cable for the steering to turn each way. If you pull this too tight, there's two problems that will happen. You won't be able to turn the steering wheel fully. And also, if you put too tight a bend in this cable, it will restrict the movement of the uh, brake cable. Tie all three cables using this hole here. It's got those three cables tied up in that position. We can go back and cut these tails off the cable ties once we've actually got them all in position. So now I've got three cables coming through here. What I want to do is actually route them through my grommet. So we're going to come up through this front grommet, along the chassis rail and down through the rear grommet. Right. Do those one at a time. And it gets tighter getting these through the grommet, but it's all possible. Make sure these don't end up twisted and looking untidy. While Steve routes the wires, I wanted to quickly highlight something. The disc brake used on the Goblin is very similar to that used on a regular push bike. Take my bike for example. Starting at the handles, if we follow the cable down, we come to the brake caliper, and you can clearly see the brake disc. And just like the Goblin, when I pull the handle, you can see the pads clamping on the disc, stopping the wheel from rotating. If you can set up the brakes on the Goblin car, there's no reason why you couldn't set up the brakes on your own push bike the next time it needs adjusting. Just um, make sure you get an adult to check before you go riding off. We don't want any accidents. It's quite impressive what skills can transfer into the everyday life. But um, Steve, where do we start first? To allow proper adjustment of the brakes later, screw the adjuster in as far as it'll go. And you need to do that both here on the caliper itself and on the brake lever at the front of the car. So now I've done that, I can take my 
cable end and take it through here and feed it down through the clamp on the actuator arm. And what we're looking for is a nice smooth curve here. If that curve is too tight, it'll restrict the movement of the cable through the uh, outer. But now, make sure I've pulled my cable down tight from the other end, and then nip up that clamp. And there's a little groove in the clamp for the cable to go through, so take note that it actually goes through that correct slot there. Later on, what we'll also do is cut the end off that, um, so we haven't got this tail lying around here. Our next step is to align the mounting points for our caliper, which are one in front and one behind the caliper onto its mounting bracket, which then has attached to the white um, chassis bracket. So to do that, we want to slacken off these two fixing bolts a little, and these allow the caliper to slide both sideways and also to rotate slightly because they have domed washers in here. So it's important never to lose those washers um, because you'll lose your ability to align the caliper properly. So we want to actually center the caliper over the disc and now we've got our cable attached, we can actually, at the front of the car, pull our lever on to apply the brake and then tighten up those two bolts I've just loosened off. Don't over tighten them at this stage certainly because we may need to come back and go around this process again. So that's centered our caliper over our disc. The next step is actually to adjust the pad gap. So the pads at the moment are a reasonable distance away from the uh, disc which means you've got to pull the lever quite a long way before it actually gets the pads to contact the disc and start breaking. So with a five millimeter Allen key, ideally one with a ratchet handle like this, we need to come to the inside of the caliper and in there is a hole that we can slot that in and it takes a few movements because of the restricted space under here. And so that inner pad is coming towards the disc as I turn that gradually. What I don't want is for it to touch the disc, but I want it to be close. So we'll stop there for the moment. And then we switch to a three millimeter Allen key. And this is gonna come in from the outside. Now there is a little red rubber insert in this uh, silver disc here. We don't want to remove that because actually that means that we'd end up adjusting the silver disc. What we're gonna do is go through that and keep going in. And if you rotate slightly, and push in, you should find that your tool locks into an inner recess that we're then adjusting. And by turning that probably only half a turn, we shall see the outer pad move in towards the disc. There we go. And that we can then check, I think actually our inner pad maybe needs to come in a little bit further because I've still got quite a lot of movement. And this adjustment process is something where with the centering and the pad adjustments you may go around two or three times before you get it right and are happy with it. So that's now working much better and I can feel brake being applied before, uh, well before the lever gets to the handlebar. One final adjustment, which you shouldn't need at this point, is the knurled nuts on the cable ends at this end and at the brake lever end. These allow for further adjustment should you find that the cable's stretched a little bit after it's been used a few times, or if the pads have worn after the car's been driven for a while. And you can then unscrew those just a little bit and then use the larger lock nut to lock them in position so they can't rotate. And that, again, improves your braking once there's been wear and tear on the system. Ideally, you shouldn't need to do that um, when the car is new. And that's the end of this video. If you need any further assistance with the Green Power project, please always feel free to email or call the office 
We also have some brilliant community groups where teams share their experiences and expertise with each other. It's a wonderful place for collaboration, so don't miss out. All of the information you need is in the description down below. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like and maybe even a subscribe. Pretty please? Still, plenty of building left to be done, so I'll catch you on the next one.